Absolutely, and it's got to work like that. I mean, uh, you've seen, you've been a recruiter at the college level. Really, the draft is is the NFL, you know, recruiting. I mean, if, if you do well with recruiting, you're going to probably do well in the in in the season. And if you do well in the draft, you're going to do well. Obviously, you can you can trade and stuff and, and, and stuff like that in the NFL. But the, the draft is really, really big, and they have done well uh, on the defensive side of things. You were telling me a great story. Uh, you guys started off a little a little bit slow uh, this season. I uh, got off to a, a rough start. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, Spag's not a defensive genius. You guys are giving up a lot of points. People are saying you need to get rid of uh, the head coach and the D coordinator. Uh, it got to be a lot of pressure for you guys on the defensive side of things. And then all of a sudden, boom, uh, it, it, it clicks. And all of a sudden, you guys are, are one of the best in the league all of a sudden. See, that's the beauty of football. You know, and you get in those situations, and you got to remain, remain even killed. Coach Coughlin didn't even blink. No, really? No, didn't you? Know, <laughs> just keep, you just roll your sleeves up, you go to work, and, and just mm -hmm. like he says, because each and every individual needs to try to get better, sure. and we got to improve, and that's what, what they did, and that's what we did, you know, and, and mm -hmm. just think if we did blink. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm going to hand something here to Mickey. This is a little another little contest we're going to do. We're going to see if you do as well uh, on this contest as you did the first contest. From where I have the slash there, Mickey, okay. she's going to read a quote from somebody. Uh, you need to guess who this quote is from, okay? So uh, go ahead, Mickey. Okay. <laughs> well, th this kind of ties into my question here, too, that I have to ask for Connor, so we'll, uh, we'll go on it. It's been a few years of learning for most of the guys, like Tuck, Ossie, and all those guys, so now we're basically just get out there and play. During practice, we'll talk about certain things and watch film and discuss certain things, but all of us really know all the different moves, all the different things that we're good at, what to use in the game. I think our coach, Mike Waffle, has done a great job of individually helping each guy realize what they probably will be best at and how to be successful with it and how to practice it. We just don't get out there to be passive. He makes us work hard at it. Mike Waffle's done a great job, and I can't take much credit for that. He's done a great job with us. Who is it? This is Kathy's my son, Michael Strahan. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It is that. It's Michael Strahan it and Connor. Yep. Connor very concerned now. He says, you know, with uh, with Strahan retiring, um, you guys have obviously made moves to fill in fill in a really big hole on the defensive line. We've got uh, Sammy Knight and Danny Clark, and now uh, a veteran in Win to to fill in the gaps. Is that gonna is that gonna do the trick? What do you see for the changes in the defensive line without Strahan? You know, um, Michael met with me about maybe two or three weeks before he made his decision, and we I mean, had a real serious talk, and, and I told him this. I said, look me in the eye. I said, if you come back, I said, we're going to have the same plan that Coach Coughlin had for you. You know, we rested him a lot, you know, and, and during practice, uh, poor Tuck got worn out, but uh, <laughs> we rested him a lot, and, and um, you know, had it. <clears throat> and it was a great plan. So, because you know, you could, if you if you could play forever, you'd play forever. I mean, your right. body changes, you know. Sure. And um, so we worked on a lot of things to be able to keep his body in shape. You know, the things that I learned from Jerry Rice and Tim Brown and Rich Gannon and the Romanowski and, and uh, Rob Woodson out in, in uh, Trace Armstrong out in Oakland. We did a lot of the same things because they were older than him even sure. now, and he he trained that way. And then. Um, the, the last thing I told him, I said, you know, I said, if you, if you come back, I said, I said, we can do this thing. I, th I said, you know, we can do it, you know, and just to keep being, get him excited. You know? mm -hmm. sure. Now, I said, on the flip side, if you don't come back, <laughs> okay, you, in free agency as it is today, you couldn't write the book any better. You've been with the same team, you know, you've been a, a, you know, a Pro Bowl player. Okay, and you did not have the ring, and you went out on top. It, it's 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 the storybook. Know, storybook ending. It is. Absolutely. You know? and they live, and I said, Michael, and you you finish this thing, and the, the last line is, you live happily ever after. You know? <laughs> and and uh, so whatever decision you make, I'm support you either way. And uh, I believe single season sack leader, and uh, he is number five all time with sacks. I think like a 143 just passed Randall, and he passed Richard Dent, which is a is a pretty good one uh, in, in his in his own right. Uh, talk to me as a man who has coached for 30 years. Uh, he's a he's a first time ballot Hall of Famer. For a guy like that to give you credit as a coach, what does that mean to you? Well, the biggest thing is is that Michael and I the first. The first day we met, um, I came in. Well, he came in. He, he, he talked to our Raider guys. You know, he, he called them up right away. The <laughs> they you know, chat with each other, yeah. Right? And uh, so, anyways, when he goes, well, 
the Raider guys told me, says, all we do is watch film of you, so if that gives you, gives you any indication whatsoever. So. But Michael, Michael and I, the first time we sat down, I had all, I showed him all my cut-ups to him, and, mm -hmm. and uh, we watched film for two hours, and he got up to leave my office, and um, he started to leave. I go, no, come on back here. And I said, what? I said, sit down. I got eight plays I want to show you, okay? You see these eight plays where you're not playing hard enough? Okay, we're going to fix that. Oh, yeah, wow. So, so, wow. You know, you get, so he knew that I, I was going to be serious with him and sure. we were going to be professional about it, and I wasn't going to let him slide. You Absolutely. Know, he was going to try to get better and better no matter what. And uh, certainly did. Uh, let's talk about your other, you got a couple youngsters, as you mentioned, Tuck and, and O.C. Uh, you guys absolutely ran, and I think was it uh, September 30th maybe uh, in this past season, you guys ran Donovan McNabb uh, just ragged in that game. O.C. had, what, six uh, sacks on his own, I think, in that game. Uh, and, and, and again, that happened in the Super Bowl as well. You guys just ran a Tom Brady ragged. Uh, talk about the youngsters. Tuck, who you seem to be able to move him around. And that seems to be a great weapon and a great, great move on your guys' part. Talk about Tuck and, and O.C. and what they mean to, to you up front. Well, O.C., you know, when I was in Oakland, I wanted, I had O.C. in Oakland two days before the draft, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we, I, I really wanted O.C. in New York because I could just tell, you know, he has such great speed and, and he was a nose tackle in college. Nobody realizes that. I mean, think about, I mean early in his wow. career. How many, think, he's, not a, he's not a real big guy, but he's a great no. leverage player. You know, he plays a run really well, and he sure. takes pride in it. But his speed as a pass rusher is excellent. He's a great technician, mm -hmm. and he's really smart. You know, and, and I, you know, I, he's just a great personality. You know, yeah. and he can take this thing as far as he wants to go. Uh, but, it, you know, and, and eventually, it, you know, it, it, it trickles down. It's the trickle-down effect. Obviously, Tom Coughlin did a phenomenal job. You talked about that. You guys sometimes have to have blinders on. You guys, at one point, were six and two. Uh, you were feeling pretty good. Uh, you didn't finish. You finished the season strong with the win against the Bills, and then you you looked good against the Patriots, real good against the Patriots. But there was still, you know, I watch it. Of course, I don't think you do, but uh, I watch the TV. You listen to the radio, and people were basically saying, if you guys lose in the Tampa Bay game, Coughlin probably loses his job because he not had great success in the playoffs. Are you guys aware of those external pressures or are you guys so isolated you don't know that pressure that's on you guys? All right, the next guy, Joel, is Justin talking you know, <laughs> <laughs> Justin's going to be a great player. You know? uh, now I'd rather talk about the guys. You know, that stuff right there, I think it's, it's all part of the game. Everybody puts it. There's a lot of pressure to win, obviously, you know, in all of sports. It doesn't matter. I mean, look at what happened to you know, Coach Randolph down sure. there. Sure, I mean, absolutely. It's, it is, it's, it's just a lot of pressure to win, and that's just the way it is in society. That's the way it's built, you know. And you, so you guys are aware of it. You know it, you, it's out there, and you know that people are, uh, you know, uh, Monday morning uh, quarterbacks. But it does trickle down. So obviously, Coach Coughlin now, you know, all of a sudden he did a good job in Jacksonville, but he couldn't get over the hump. Now he's over the hump. Now he's in that elite group. Spags was highly uh, sought after uh, for a new uh, for a head coaching job, uh, and it, c it continues down. So then his coordinators are looked upon highly, and in his coaches, and you are one of them. Let's go to you in regards to. Is this, I mean, like you said, the kids are grown now, and it's just you and Kathy. Is this what you would like, or, you know, it, let's, let's say a, a, a BCS powerhouse team came to you and offered you a D coordinator position. In, in the football realm, is that a step back, or is that a parallel step? Uh, how do you see that in the coaching world? It, it, let's say it's a USC or a UCLA. Mm -hmm. Big school is a D coordinator position at the college level, better than the D-line coach, of course, of the world champion New York Giants. Well, I don't, I don't know if you look at it. There's a lot of great jobs, you know, and I don't know if there's one better or worse, you know, and mm -hmm. a lot of those jobs are actually, it just depends on what you want to do. You know? sure. um, we are very fortunate to be in the NFL, and I thank God every day that I'm in the <laughs> NFL, you know, because you, you sure. enjoy it, and I would like to remain in the NFL. Okay, gotcha.